Grindstormer? More like, have fun grinding through the ninth circle of hell. Holy Christ, this game is hard. But I love it, and it's one of my favorite Sega Genesis games. If you're into vertical shooters, or just shmups in general, shit man, you clicked on the right video. Released on the Genesis in 1994, this game is regarded by many to be one of the first examples of a bullet hell shoot 'em up and golly gee willikers, they ain't wrong. Developed by Toplan, the same dudes who made Truxton, Fireshark, and Twinhawk for the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive, these guys pretty much created the bullet hell genre of video games. They also made Batsugun. Batsugun! Pretty much Grindstormer is a watered-down version of Batsugun, if that makes any sense, but that's not a bad thing. It's obvious that Grindstormer was ahead of its time, as later bullet hell entries use several aspects of this game. Overall, this game is awesome in my opinion, and a must-play for serious fans of the shoot-'em-up genre. But per this video's title, just how hard is it? First, let's start with a little backstory of me with this game. Grindstormer was the first shoot-'em-up that I owned on the Genesis, and the second one overall, right behind River Raid on the Atari 2600. Now, if you never played River Raid, I highly recommend it. It's easily the best shmup on the Atari 2600, and the first time that I played a game on a home console where my ship was actually moving forward. Unlike the usual fixed shooters such as Space Invaders, Galga, Centipede, great games, but kind of basic. I know, I know, I'm showing my age. But the cool thing about River Raid is that it was one of the first games to randomly generate placement of enemies and items within its levels, which prevented players from memorizing routes to master the game. Pretty wild for an Atari 2600 game back in 1982. But we're not talking about River Raid, are we? No, no, no. This is a Grindstormer video. Now, the key to this game is memorization and not throwing your controller in a fit of rage, which shouldn't come as a shock for a 1990s shoot 'em up game. But Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, this game can be frustrating as hell when you first play it. I mean, look at this, right here. I can't even get past this small section without dying. I've been playing this game since I was a kid. Absolutely ruthless. But this is a classic example of a game that takes under an hour to beat if you mastered it, but takes a lifetime to actually master it. But like I said before, enemy memorization becomes a crucial part of the game especially in the later levels, where destroying the enemies as soon as possible before the screen gets taken over by too many of them is a must. Now what really blows my mind about this game is that it's only 5 levels, but each level is a long, tough grind. Pun intended. The enemies are like a bad case of herpes. They never go away, and they're a mixture of quick small ones and large more powerful ones. But the game does a good job of kicking your butt nonstop, as the enemy bullets can reach about 50 bullets to fill the screen, leaving you cornered and using your bombs regularly to prevent certain death. That's another thing. Use your bombs frequently because they get replenished when you respawn after dying, but you don't get to keep the ones that you didn't use before. So you really have no reason to ration them unless you're approaching a boss. Now I'm playing on the easy mode right now with the largest number of lives and continues given, and I'm still getting bent over a chair right now. I can't even imagine what normal, hard, and very hard is like. And plus, you know there's some dork out there that can beat this game on very hard without dying. Like, alright bro, don't forget to use protection when banging all those tens. Anywho, by default, you're armed with your basic shot blast and two guns at your side. These can fire at an angle when pressed down to spread out your shot across the level, or it can be positioned to form up to produce a more powerful standard blast that just fires in front of your ship. Now, I don't really care for the missile option, although it is a powerful weapon, I'm just terrible with it and I don't know how to properly utilize its capabilities. Now the search weapon is definitely the best weapon in the game in my opinion, as those two guns at your side become a homing attack that has a mind of its own and does a good job of destroying the enemies while you're not lined up with them while avoiding their gunfire. However, the homing missiles do have a tendency to attack more powerful enemies for an extended period, leaving you exposed to little faster ones which could be destroyed with one shot. Power specials increase your strength of your weapons and of course, like in Gradius, or Gradius, you have your speed ups. But that's the beautiful thing about this game, limited options with your weapons, but each weapon is more effective in certain areas, which is where your memorization comes in. You have to learn its specific level design and use it as a strategy. One hit means death and sends you back to a checkpoint, which are plentiful thankfully. Because of this, like I said before, you might as well use your bombs regularly because the checkpoints are frequent and you have to grind through the levels to reach them. Great thing about this cart is that there's another game mode called V5, which is the Japanese version of this game. It's pretty much the same game, but the weapon upgrade system features a Gradius style weapon grid with no bombs. Pretty cool, but I think I prefer the North America style better. 
Also, the V5 is probably the harder version, so I think I'll pass. Now, as much as I love this game, there are some flaws. First off, the gunfire sound effects? That's eh, really not that good on the airs. It's like your wife asking you to rate the leaves during Sunday football. Like, Jesus Christ, shut the fuck up already. Also, the game slows down very frequently when bullets fill the screen, to the point where the game almost lags for like a second or two. Now, this could come in handy for an extra reaction time, but it could also drag you towards a bullet that you were trying to avoid. It's a shame that this game was never ported to the PS1 or Saturn. I think it would have been an awesome port for the 32-bit consoles, like Batsugun! But I'm also a huge fan of 32-bit shoot-em-ups, so there's that. Now, before you go out and buy this thing, there's several things that I should mention. First off, a complete and box copy of this game in 2024 will run you about $300, which is just absolutely insane and not worth the price in my opinion. You can buy like a Nintendo Switch for that. A loose cart? Eh, 120 which is still ridiculous. But here's the kicker, the North American version has since become known for a large portion of the copies not working or being faulty due to a manufacturing error that resulted in a defective cartridge print run. Bomber dude. So if you're going to buy this, you better make sure that it's a good working copy and not to get screwed. Now, I'm no tech nerd, but word around the campfire was that the PCBs in these tank and carts were known for being cheaply made and are prone to stop working eventually. For some reason, I must have gotten a good copy because my copy has worked just dandy since I got it back in 1995. Overall, this game is awesome and is easily in my top 10 favorite Sega Genesis games. However, Grindstormer is an insanely difficult game and dodging those large chunky bullets are borderline impossible. Now, I'm not sitting here claiming to be super knowledgeable on the genre, but I played a lot of shmups and this one always kicks my ass, nonstop. Per the video's title, I would probably rank this in the top five hardest shmups on the Sega Genesis. It might not be the hardest, but it's one of them. Now, where would you rank this? Or where would you place this overall in terms of 16-bit shmups? I would love to hear your opinion. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and definitely give this game a shot. Don't buy it, but, I don't know, maybe emulate it? Whatever.